Hi there, Pisces. Welcome to your love, romance, and relationship reading. So, what I'm feeling here in your relationship sector is there is a little bit of conflict and opposition coming in in the relationship front, okay? And um, I feel like there are definitely um, this need here to... I'm hearing like priorities, priorities. You're with somebody that might not know how to prioritize, um, that might not know how to functionally make decisions that are good for them. And I also am hearing as well, this could be you in the relationship where the other person, I just feel like one person is very passive and the other person takes a lot of initiative. And I feel like that energy needs to be balanced out for the greater good of that relationship. So let me leave that. <clears throat> well, you've got a lot of cards that just popped out. And uh, I'm also feeling as well, there is uh, opposition, mainly because somebody is, um, I'm, I'm feeling like somebody's feeling very frustrated and they're not really sure about how to move on with their lives. And they're not really sure about, you know, whether or not they're happy in a relationship. So that's what I'm feeling. We have fire signs all over this spread. So I feel like you might be in a relationship here with a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. Um, and I'm also sensing as well, the opposition is coming in, the, the energy of opposition, like disputes, arguments, little um, nitpicky things that other people are doing to you. And I also feel like energetically, if you're dealing with a fire sign, you're a water sign and they're a fire sign. So there's that sense of like passivity and dominance. It's a major theme coming through this reading. And we need to find a way to balance out that energy. Okay, so let me talk here. This is what I was feeling before. So let me talk here first about the foundation. We have here the five of swords. This is a very tit-for-tat type of an energy. You know, it's like, these are the arguments that I'm actually feeling playing out. You know, this is, uh, if you look at the sword, this is somebody with wealth, right? So one person could be like the uh, provider in the relationship. And the argument goes, I make the money, so I make the decisions. And then the other person feels very disempowered the other person is like i take care of everything at home so you could be you know like a stay-at-home mother stay-at-home father and the other person could be like the primary breadwinner in the household and one person feels very empowered because they feel like you know i make all the money i need to make the executive decisions and then the other person is like but i take care of everything else without me how would you be able to succeed with no one taking care of the household and the children and you know uh, we're co-parenting or we're sharing responsibilities here but one person is not playing fair so I feel like the energy is very combative it's very cutthroat and it's it's about like keeping scores it's about who contributes what and it's also as well with the nature of the sword energy it's almost like dividing up assets, making severance, um, kind of like cutting things off. Um, I feel like you're dealing with somebody who keeps interrupting when you talk. And I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is a little bit more on the selfish end and they know how to say things to really chip away at your self-esteem. We have as well the judgment card. And the judgment card basically indicates that you need to move on from this because there isn't any type of a clear resolution here. So if this is going anywhere, it's very cyclical and new agreements, new reconciliations can't really be had in this situation, okay? So try your best to remove yourself from this energy. So I'm sorry, the video froze up on me. So we finished talking about the foundation. Let's talk about the past. In the past, we have here the strength card as well as the queen of coins. And um, let me just say this because it, it, this is screaming out. You were taking care of somebody. This is like through thick and thin. 
you were taking care of somebody through their worst times, through their, you know, through all of their victories, you were there, through all of their failures, you were there, through all the days that they were sick, through times where they were, I want to say, incredibly um, dealing with, you know, self-esteem issues. So you were there through all of it, through thick and thin, and I feel like you really, really cherished this person and you were always physically, emotionally there for them. And as a result of this relationship, what we have as well is the Queen of Coins. And it's almost like losing yourself in a relationship because you were constantly caring for, playing the mother role to the other person. You could be a male figure dating, you know, uh, male or female and playing the, the maternal role because this is really not what a relationship is about. But I feel like you stayed in it and you constantly gave and gave and gave and then at the end of the day you find yourself at a point where you weren't able to take care of yourself you could no longer take care of yourself you're not motivated enough to and so this is a situation that is ongoing it's in the past some of you might have been dealing here with an earth sign a Taurus a Virgo or a Capricorn and I feel like the energy can go both ways they were taking care of you or you were taking care of them but I do feel that you might have been very emotionally invested in the relationship at the expense of making decisions to kind of better yourself or making decisions where you need you need it to draw back your energy and to take care of yourself and I feel like this is a situation that is still ongoing which brings us to the present moment we have the death card in the reverse this is going back to a situation that was not good for you and I'm also sensing as well, with this death card in the reverse position, it's somebody that you might have, you know, had falling out with, that there was a lot of conflict, so it could very well be the same person. But now that they need you for whatever reason, you know, it could be because they're not feeling well, it could be they're having that self-esteem, uh, that, that little, th they needed a self-esteem boost, or they're going through some financial issues as well as some emotional issues. I'm also seeing some dependency issues like chemical, drugs, alcohol dependencies. And you're going to swoop in and you want to play this fairy godmother role, okay? I'm feeling that sometimes we have to really understand the difference between when we crave that feeling of being wanted and needed and try to substitute that with something else making you know positive strides in our, your life or feeling empowered from within so that we don't need another person to validate our worth and we don't need another person to kind of validate what our assets are what our skills are what we're good at you're very very nurturing caring by nature and I feel like a lot of the times you want to feel needed and wanted and appreciated. And if you're not getting type of that type of a validation, I feel like you might have the tendency to pick partners that are constantly down in the dumps, that constantly need saving. So I feel here people returning to exes. And I'm feeling as well, while you have new things that are coming into the picture, and you know that's for those of you who are in bad relationships because I feel like the other person might not be bad but there's just no sense of agreement there's no um, there isn't just the relationship is not very stable it's not gonna lead to something new it's not gonna lead to a turning point you know it's more like a fork in the road and you're gonna have to decide do I go back to this or do I venture out into a new with a new person or into a new way. Crowning this reading, we have here the Nine of Cups. Lack of emotional satisfaction from a relationship and the Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles pretty much indicates relate like um, communication breakdown, not building with another person, not being able to retain money with another person. So some of you are with somebody and when you're with them, 
they drain your finances. When you're away from them, you're prosperous, things are starting to look up, and then they come calling, and then you come back in, and then energetically, they're really blocking a lot of your prosperity, okay? And that is a real thing, because if you are siphoning off your energy, taking care of other people, and you're not getting replenished and, and reciprocated, energetically, you're not going to be able to go out into the world, attract positive things, because you're running on empty. Does that make sense? So it is a thing, and you need to really be mindful, and that's why you know we always teach uh, being mindful about who you give your energy to, where you give your energy to, and what reserve do you have left for yourself, because I feel some of you are running on empty, constantly wanting to take care of other people. And you're not saving any for yourself. And this is not done out of selfishness. This is the rule of the universe. It's about reciprocity. It's about doing things to people or situations that deserve your energy. Okay? So not throwing your energy down an abyss that you will never get back. Because I feel like that's what uh, makes you run on empty. And when you can't really manifest and attract new things when you're in that state. Okay? So I just want you to be a little bit mindful of that. For others of you, I do feel a solid good relationships. And I do feel this is pretty much, you know, overcoming uh, differences and overcoming family expectations between two people. Okay? Like, um, there might be you know, family um, in members imposing upon you and your relationship partner. This is what you should do. This is how you raise kids. Or this is how you should, you know, live together. So I feel like some of you are overcoming that. So we have here a very, very solid couple. We have the King of Wands as well as the Queen of Wands. So you might be dealing with a fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And I feel... Even in this, it's a good couple because both people are at a point now where they're very, very independent. They know how to take care of themselves. They know how to be together, but also they know how to be alone. They know they complement each other well. One person might take care of the home. The other person might, you know, uh, go on adventures, goes goes to work, and you know, brings home the the money. But I do feel overall, even with this depiction, there are still power differentials, and there are still some type of uh, imbalances that needs to be worked out. But I feel you have an opportunity to work things out, and some of you are still dealing with this person that you have children with. This is a family unit. She is taking care of the kids. And I feel like this person, and you know, these cards are not gender specific, okay? So one person's taking care of the kids is like the, the nurturer, and the other person wants something more out of the relationship. And I feel like you're at a point now where you're trying to decide, you're trying to decide uh, pretty much whether or not you want to stay in an existing relationship or you want to venture out and look for greener pastures look for someone else who's a lot more compatible with you so i do see a lot of conflicts here i do see some of you if you're involved with a fire sign uh there's a sense here about you know like um loyalty and fidelity so i don't feel like you know there's infidelity here but i do see a lot of creative differences and it can be resolved but i feel like it needs a lot of work it needs a lot of self-awareness it needs a lot of like things need to be out in the open and needs to be discussed in a very um you know straightforward type of a way and i feel like if you're dealing with a partner who you might be dealing with a partner who wants more out of life okay for those who are single I have fire signs that actually would be a really dynamic match for you. It might be something that is very, you know, exciting, fun, really enticing in the beginning. But then over time, I feel like the, the, the differences between the two of you might be a little bit too, too much for the relationship. So you have a person here that is very, you know, attracted to you. They're very enthusiastic and you're trying to decide whether or not you want to go with them. So I have Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And this person might have children of his or her own. But I feel like this is a very good relationship for the time being. I just don't see it being too permanent. 
and I don't see a lot of compatibilities overall, but I feel like it can work temporarily, okay? So it's an okay relationship for now, and they're a good person. They have a good heart. They want to take care of you, and keep in mind, you know, we need to all take care of ourselves. We need to be independent, self-sufficient before we can invite another person into our life. So this is setting up a, a cycle already that I'm not too happy with, but I feel like this is a really spirited, you know, honest, loyal type of a person. So you just have to decide whether or not it's worth it because I don't feel it being long term. But I feel that it can work and I feel like there's a lot you can learn from that other person. There's a lot they can learn from you. You're learning to be a lot more independent, to grab opportunities, to be more spontaneous. And I feel they're learning from you to be nurturing, to be more sensitive, to slow down a little bit and appreciate the smaller, finer things in life. And so, in a way, you have a lot to learn from each other. And because of that, it should come in and it should be experience. So don't sit on the fence with this too long. I feel like it can bring a lot of learning it's a steep learning curve though, but I feel like it's a, a good experience where you can grow and learn a lot from the other person. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, uh, Pisces. I do wish you all the best. Um, I feel like, you know, the relationship in the past, if you've had a um, an earth sign here, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, I feel like it's already in the past. I don't feel going back to it is going to give you anything new and I do see a lot of conflicts as well okay um, new people if it's a brand new fire sign I feel like it can work out and it looks pretty promising all right um, have a good great holiday season for those of you celebrating and I do wish you the best take care and I'll be back for the mid-month reading okay bye bye